I decided to give my fingers a break after finishing Paul Robinson's six-week training program. I set an easier next goal for myself, which was clearing all the V5s and V6s in the cave area of my gym for the current set. Unfortunately, the pandemic happened. So I actually ended up with one V6 short and I didn't have a chance to get a variety of different angles and close-up shots for the routes. I've been hoping the gym closure will be short term, but I think it's been long enough, so it's time to release the video with what I have. In my opinion, climbing comes down to three main points. First, First, figure out the technique and evaluate whether you have the strength to do the crux move individually. Second, figure out the technique to climb as efficiently as possible so you will have enough strength to do the crux move. Lastly, read the route correctly so you won't waste time and strength climbing with the wrong beta. Executing these three points right is not as easy as it seems. Every climb is different, the crux could be different for different people. It's all about accumulating the experience of doing it by yourself and seeing other people doing it. So I'm going to break down the climbs I did based on these three points and hopefully you will find it helpful. The first route is a yellow V6. The crux for me is these two awkward dinoing moves. Initially, I habitually jumped into it and catching it with straight arms. And it felt like I almost injured my shoulders. I then remembered that whenever you dyno onto a hold, you should bend your arms and engage your scapula so your muscles can absorb the sudden force. Also, you should lift your legs to elevate your center of gravity to reduce the leverage. The same principle applies for the second dyno. Once I got to this point, it took me a while to read the route correctly. I encourage you to pause the video to think about it, even though the holds might be a bit hard to see. I initially thought I had to cross my left hand up this hold and then get my right foot to this hold. That felt like a natural continuation. However, it is incredibly hard because the foothold is very slippery. Eventually, I figure out the right beta. The lesson for me is whenever there's a beta that includes heel hooking a jug, Chances are high, it's the right beta. The second round is a pink V5. There wasn't any crux move for me. I was temporarily stuck in one move because of route reading. I tried multiple times reaching with my left hand to the next hold and then matching with my right. But that felt hard because my body was too stretched out. Eventually, I figured out I could simply reach out with my right hand first and avoid matching in a stretched out position. The third round is a white V5. Again, there was no crux move for me, but I had route reading problems in the last few moves. My first thought was to reach out with my right hand right away. But putting weight on footholds on the roof while your upper body is already over the roof is always harder because of the awkward body position. A better approach is usually to figure out a way to use the foothold that is also over the roof. The fourth route is a blue V5. There's no crux move and all the moves are straightforward but it's super long. That means I had to climb very efficiently in order to complete it. I had to remind myself to stay really low and keep my arms straight for the starting sequence in order to not run out of gas at the end. The fifth route is a red V5. All the moves are straightforward but there's a crux move here. I ended up doing the move by towing in as hard as I could while keeping my core as tight as I could. This reminds me that climbing crux move is not just about temporarily pulling as hard as you can with your arms. It actually involves temporarily pushing the whole body as hard as you can. The sixth route is a purple V6. The route reading is difficult for the initial sequence but I will skip the breakdown because it's hard to see from this camera angle. The cross move is a big throw towards the sloper. There's nothing technical about this move, but in order to have enough strength to, at this point to throw myself up, I had to climb very efficiently in the starting sequence. This move here at the start can be easily muscled through by cutting feet, but I will run out of gas when I get to the crux. In order not to cut feet for this move, I had to toe hook really hard and keep my core really tight to make it happen. This reminds me that climbing efficiently doesn't necessarily really mean generating less total force. It's about figuring out how to generate less force with the muscles that are more quickly to get fatigued, which for most people are their arms. The last route is a blue V6. Route reading is difficult for the initial sequence, but again I will skip the breakdown because it's hard to see from this camera angle. Once I get to this position, here is an okay pocket, okay crimp that could be a hand or foot, a low foot somewhere down here, an okay pinch that might or might not be too high, and another 
another OK Pocket here that might or might not be too high. It actually took me days to read the route right. If it had not been because of this, I probably would have had enough time to complete the last V6. So definitely pause the video and think about this and let me know in the comments if you actually get it right in your first try. Alright, so the answer is actually to step on the ball feature really hard with the left foot to not slip and then reach out to the pocket with the left hand. After a few moves, I reached this position, which is also confusing. I knew I had to get my right hand up to this hold, but how to do so was not obvious. Eventually, I figured out a difficult but possible way to do it. That is, bringing the left foot up and throwing up the right hand in a barn door fashion. This is the crux of this climb. The key is to bend the left arm and lock it, so you can be as close to the wall as possible and shorten the throw distance as much as possible. The setters in my gym did a really good job on this one. If someone had told me this right sequence, I would have probably flashed it. But instead, it took me almost a week. Thanks for watching. As always, make sure to like, subscribe, and check out my website, geekclamber.com. See you in the next video.